Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. We're continuing on with our Republic of Ireland all time eleven, and this time we're on to right wing. Not a position that uh, compared to I suppose other positions that we have a lot of quality in. Even in our list, it doesn't exactly make me uh, very excited anyway. But we've got uh, Jason McAteer, Ray Houghton, Jerry Daly, uh, Peter Farrell. We've got Steve Finn in there, Jonathan Walters, and Aidan McGee is getting in there on a mention as well. Um, is there anyone you feel like we're, we're leaving out there? No, I, I think that's more or less the list. I mean, you could get an argument and maybe come back to when we're talking about the centre mids that someone we're leaving out could be a, would be a world-class player. Well, I'm just, maybe slot them in on the right. One just popped into my head there. Played a lot, playing a lot on the right recently is Robbie Brady as well. He's in there, which we, we kind of overlooked as well. I know he hasn't been great recently, but... I think Robbie's still a bit to do yeah, to get yeah. mentioned in, in that side. I think if you did a good, well, he's probably, maybe on, the left, good five, probably on the left yeah, anyway. Another five years, yeah, but then I, not yet. I think you, not you yet, can see yeah, Robbie yeah. then maybe coming into yeah. talk, I, but uh, right side, no, he's not done enough yet. But it's an yeah. interesting list. Yeah, um, is like I kind of, I kind of want to maybe shoehorn someone from the left hand side onto the right to make this team stronger. Um, we, I, I, I actually, we forgot to mention that Richard Dunn actually won the, the vote, so he's actually over the centre-back. So our, our team right now is given Gary Kelly, Richard Dunn, Paul McGrath and Dennis Sermon. So, as you can see, it's a very balanced size, so we need to kind of... You can say goodbye to another interview with Mick now, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll get over and set up for a place on the bench. But he might, he, might, he might get the manager's job for this team, who knows? Um, but like, McAteer had great days, you know, under Mick. Um, Ray Houghton, obviously iconic. Uh, how many iconic moments he's had, obviously scoring against England. It's probably the, the high point then in Italy as well. But when you kind of go down the list, then you're kind of, did they do enough? You know, do you know what I mean? Like McAteer has an iconic moment in regards to um, the Holland goal. Walters, I suppose you could say in a way, the Bosnia game, getting us to the Euros. Yeah. Uh, he, he did I think the... you're right. I think it's not a, a position that we've had a, a huge amount of wealth within in comparison to, say, the centre-back or the centre-midfield position. And there is an argument for switching a player outside. Again, that comes down to tactics and who against you're playing. But if we're talking about... You know the the I suppose the solid right side of players that we had over the time. McAteer iconic moment against the Dutch, but the one that really stands out for the list for me is Ray Houghton because of, you know, the England goal. That's one of the moments that started it all off. The start of the ball rolling for the World Cups and Big Jack's reign. Would that have happened without Ray's goal? That's that's an argument in itself. And then obviously ninety four, one of the most iconic moments. Not just in Irish football, but I think in European football, a lot of fans from around the world, World Cup uh, fans, would would remember Houghton's goal because Ireland weren't given a chance against Italy that day. So I think I think Ray would be the one, and I think Jack was always a big fan of that. If he needed yeah. a job doing, Ray Houghton was your man. For yeah, the I job, mean, wasn't it? Ray was our go-to guy on the right side of midfield or the right wing mm. under Jack. He also got a crucial goal in that didn't matter in the end in the playoff against Belgium. Uh, towards the end of his days in 1997 that almost mm. got us to the 98 World Cup but um, yeah I mean he, he was he, I, I don't think Ray was world class but um, uh, for me yeah probably he, he was the, the best player in the position world class for the Irish though probably for us he was absolutely crucial mm. for us and he was crucial for Jack and, and those those goals were priceless Another iconic goal, and I'm going to go back, I wouldn't have him in the team, is, is Peter Farrell, who I think deserves a mention. I'm going back to the 40s and 50s. He was the captain and he scored a goal when we beat England at Goodison Park. I know we talked about it before. Um, definitely worth a mention, more of a defensive uh, a right half, but more of a defensive right midfield player, but uh, definitely worth a mention. A, a favourite of mine in my younger days was Jerry Daly in the mm. 70s. He was a crucial player for us. Chipped in with a lot of lot of good good goals for us in the seventies, uh, forty eight caps, thirteen goals, um. But I, I would go with Ray if you're going with a, a right side of midfield player in the right position. If we're not moving somebody out from the centre, yeah, Ray would be my choice. Um, I'd one hundred percent go with Ray Houghton as well, and I think it might be underselling him a little bit of how good a footballer he was. Like you know, probably because we don't remember seeing him playing week in week out. A lot of us, um. 
you know, won two league championships with, with Liverpool in 90, oh, 1987, yeah, 88, one of the best Liverpool teams ever. You don't get into that unless you're a top player. And then he was with Villa. I think we talked about it on one of the earlier episodes when Villa had Townsend, McGrath, Staunton, and they were challenging Man United for the Premier League. So he when in his prime, he was one of the... It was, he was a top six player, you'd say, today mm. in England, which there's not... We, have, we don't have... We haven't had that many of them duping it out. You know, we've said it's kind of a not our strongest position um, but I think but I, what always impressed me about him apart from obviously the two iconic goals was um, he was a player that didn't necessarily have any really strong attributes so he wasn't particularly fast wasn't particularly good you know was particularly physical. tall yeah no but he wasn't <laughs> was but he always impacted games yeah. because he was he, he's the stereotypical the first yard was in his head very very intelligent footballer mm. had that kind of uncoachable ability to arrive into the box at the right time read the, the game well and we're talking about building a team i think he had that kind of work ethic and, and stuff as well mm. he was a coach's dream and um yeah better footballer than we're maybe giving him credit for but i, I think he'd, he's a perfect man to go into a team if you want it to be balanced you know for me it's and the two goals that's the t- two yeah. looping goals <laughs> Exactly, yeah. which in itself did so much for Irish football, yeah, no. not just on the pitch, but also off the pitch as well. So, I think I, I think that's a done deal with Ray Houghton. Were you going to just follow up on something? Yeah, no, just the goals. They were just, I mean, they, they were just so crucial. The, the The England game just meant so much. Our first time in a major finals, and against the old enemy, and to actually to beat them and to get that goal. I mean, he's probably worth his place in the team for that alone. Not to mind. I wonder, I wonder how many points Ray Houghton has got <laughs> yeah. because of those two goals. And not forgetting that, like, the 1994 World Cup, Italy got to the final that mm. year after we bet them. Do you remember yeah. Umbro had that brilliant we were... advertising campaign with Brazil and Ireland? We, but we both bet them they just had better shorts or something. It was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Ray Houghton, I think, is the consensus, Paul. Yeah, well, I mean, three against one, I haven't even given my pick. But out of that list, I'd probably have to go for Houghton as well. So I think that's a clean sweep for Ray Houghton, and he's getting in the uh, all-time 11 on the right-hand side. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Would you have some, someone else? Have we forgotten someone that you might have had in there? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Drop a like on the video, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now, thanks for watching.